as Luke Skywalker said, what a heap of junk. This is not a heap of junk. This Brazy is the Gargamel chamber. It looks a bit, not an amazing piece of equipment now, but back in 1973, this did something quite remarkable. What it did was, it discovered neutral currents. Gargamel, named after Rabelais's legendary giant, wife of Gargantua. Okay, so normally, you know, when you think of what makes something move, typically it's some sort of interaction, right? Some interaction makes something move. So, you know, the kind of things that we, we know of that will do that will be some sort of electric interaction or magnetic interaction. Two electrons, you know, go past one another, then they'll, they'll, they'll repel and so they'll move. However, if you've got a neutral particle passing an electron, something with no, no electromagnetic charge, you wouldn't, wouldn't expect anything to happen. Except when there's another interaction involved. And that other interaction is called the weak interaction. And that's what was measured inside this chamber back in 1973. So this is a big, this is, this is a piece of history, is it? It really is a piece of history. This, this, the experiment that went on in this machine actually won uh, Glashoff, Weinberg and Salam the Nobel Prize in 1979. What happened in here? So they've got a lot to thank, thank this machine for. The body of Gargamel's chamber is a huge can container, four meters 80 long and one meter 90 in diameter. Its construction required a far greater precision than that needed in conventional boiler making. So we're in the science garden in CERN, where there's a lot of little bits and bobs of equipment. Um, some of it's just been put together as, as art. Uh, this is obviously its, its original, original thing. This, this used to weigh 25 tonnes when it was full of, uh, of Freon. To guarantee good photographs, the inside of the chamber has to be painted with an absolute photographic black against which the thin slender strings of white bubbles stand out clearly. It's in a terrible state. This is disgraceful. There's like a beer can, right? And I don't know if this was Weinberg came along here to celebrate or what, but this is a... Uh, and, and there's... Oh, I'm not even, I don't even want to touch that. There's a, there's a cigarette butt down there as well. But uh, it's, it seems to... It's a bit disappointing, really, that they let it get to this state when this is really scientific history. An epoxy resin paint was used. It was applied by an operator wearing a special heat-proof suit for he was working in a chamber heated to 120 degrees centigrade. At the time of the experiment back in 73, this was full of liquid freon. And then they passed some neutrinos through it and there were some electrons knocking around. Now, if you just had the usual electromagnetic interaction, nothing would happen. That neutrino has got zero charge. It's not going to do anything to that electron. Okay, there'll be a gravitational attraction between the two, but that's tiny. That's, you're not going to observe that. So you wouldn't expect anything to happen, except Weinberg and Glashoff and Salam predicted that something would happen, that they, there would be this, this neutral current between them, that basically this neutrino and this electron would exchange what's called a Z particle. Okay, so that Z particle would go between the, the two objects and it would cause the electron to sort of judder a little bit, to have a little, to wiggle around a little bit. And that happened, that was seen in here. Basically, they, they threw loads of neutrinos through this thing to make sure it happened and the electron started to wiggle. And that was proof that, because we knew there was no electromagnetic interaction, that was proof of a, of a new type of interaction taking place inside this, uh, this machine. It's the weak interaction. It happens in the sun, okay? It's what makes the sun glow. So, you know, what happens in, in the sun, for example, is a neutron will decay into a proton, an electron, and a neutrino. That decay process happens in the core of the sun. It's essentially what makes the sun glow. That, that process is essentially due to the weak interaction. It's a weak process. In front, there is enough room to allow the chamber body to be set up. What Weinberg, Glashoff and Salam did, they merged electromagnetism and the weak interaction together in a unified theory called electroweak theory. Gargamel cost 25 million francs, or close to five million dollars. So Gargamel is the, um, is the mother of Gargantua in Rabelais' 16th century books on giants. Uh, so it is pretty big. It certainly weighed a lot. It was 25 tonnes at the at the time of the experiment, so a pretty big object. I did say, well, it didn't look as big as I thought it was going to be, but uh, it doesn't look like 25, it, it, is, it is a bit underwhelming when you actually see it, but scientifically, it's definitely a giant, what happened in here. But for the selection of the photographs, nothing can quite replace the eyes of the scanning girl in the hunt for the tracks of the whimsical neutrino. I've talked about the weak interaction, that that's this other force, 
And what that does is that's mediated, that comes from the exchange, between two particles exchange, either a W particle or a Z particle. So they're different types of particles, they're new particles we're talking about here. The W, the W particle is called the W because it's related to the, the weak interaction. The Z particle was called the Z because, as, um, as Weinberg has, has said since, it was the, it was the piece that completed the, um, the story. So it's like the last bit of the story, so that's why he called it a Z.